This is an introduction to a software app called Burr Tools, which can be invaluable in helping you to create some Burr style puzzles from other designers. Very easy to use, and we'll use it to build a Burr puzzle called Slider 2. There are two examples here of what I call plate style puzzles. One's called Gem, one's called Slider 2. They're by a designer called Osanori uh, Yamamoto. Gem's not too difficult. It's got three plates, but one plate can only go in one position. So you can generally determine where all the parts go for that as you're building it, as long as you can get the information on what the parts look like. And you can typically get that on some publicly available sites. Slider 2 is more difficult because you've got four somewhat identical plates and you might not know where those plates go. So you're going to need some assistance in determining how to build that puzzle. Enter Burr Tools. Runs on Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and it can solve assembly and disassembly problems involving Burr style puzzles. I don't believe it will solve puzzles that require rotations. Probably the major site where you can find puzzle definitions from various designers is puzzlewillbeplayed.com, but there are some problems. One problem is the accuracy of the pieces. So you'll see that there's a frame here, but if you build it with this definition, this builds a mirror image of this. The other problem, especially in this uh, puzzle, is that you don't know where the plates go. And if you had some software that could help you solve it, you could sort of test that out. You could do trial and error. That could take quite a while. Another puzzle that I'm looking to build in the future is called Arthur by Stefan Baumegger, and it's got nine burr sticks, eight of which are in the sides, and doing that by trial and error, trying to put those burr sticks in different places would almost be impossible. So unless you get some help, it would not really be possible to build these uh, puzzles yourself. Burr Tools was designed to assist in the creation of burr puzzles. I think it's used by all of the uh, burr puzzle designers. Extremely easy to use. I'd resisted uh, learning it for quite a while. I found that it can occasionally crash, so make sure you save your work often. There's no auto backup. Uh, I found development stopped on this software some time ago, but it works very well. Very useful to test the viability of puzzles before you actually have to model them in Fusion 360 and commit them to 3D printing. So you can see if parts are maybe mirror image, there's no solution so that you don't waste your time modeling and, and building them. We've brought up Burr Tools on the left and our puzzle definition to the right, slider 2. This is from puzzlewillbeplayed.com. We're going to make up the first couple pieces here. The first thing to do is go File, New, Start a New Puzzle. Make sure that you save it often as you create uh, pieces, which are called entities. When you go New, you'll see that there'll be an S and a number S1, S2 for the different pieces. They have default colors that I don't think you can change. This is the coordinates of how large this piece is, six burrs by, or six voxels by six by six, but we can see here that across here is five voxels by four, and the Z height is two. So we'll change this to five by four by two, and we'll get a pattern here that we can use. To go up in the Z direction, we click on the slider on the left, here we have the X and Y. So if we look at the A part here, all we do is make sure this is highlighted here, which are solid voxels, and as we press, and we can hold down our mouse and sort of paint that, we can see that that's this area here. So we're just drawing the very first layer of the A part. We're going to change the Z height and we're going to add voxels on the Z height. And then you can see at the right what your part is going to look like. And once we have this identical shape, we can go new and start on the B part. You can also put labels here if you wish. For instance, if I wanted to call that B, this new one, it keeps the S2 label, but you can put B, A, and what have you after this. I don't need to change the X, Y, Z dimensions here, so we'll fill this in.
go to the second layer and we should have a part that looks like this. To confirm that your parts are in fact uh, actually created correctly, you can go to some other sites and look at pictures on various websites. We've got one here of some wooden parts and we can see that this part is identical to this. So these are accurate here in this website. Here I've built all the parts, S1 to the four frame, the four uh, plates. This is the frame and you can see this frame looks like this picture here. But if you had followed this definition, you would get what I call the bad frame where, if I blow this up a little, and the difference is this is mirror image where this tuber thickness here is on this lower side. One of the things we have to do as well is to build the result and the result is what the final puzzle will look like and you'll see that here and anything that's unknown. For instance, you know that the outside of this puzzle is all solid. You don't quite know where empty voxels are inside and we'll look at how we take care of that. We're going to build a picture of our solid our solid frame here because that's what our result should be all uh, the outside here should be solid once all four plates are in place. Inside, so if we look at the first layer inside, we're not sure what the inside, where the empty voxels are. So here's where we click variable voxel. This is the icon here to the right. And we click on the inside where we're not sure if a voxel is solid or empty. And we would do that for the three inside layers. And then top, bottom, and all the sides, we know those are solid because we can see that from the picture. So that's our result. To show how the, we'll start this, we'll start new. We've got a new puzzle. The result, set the result, is going to be S6. So we click on S6, and that's what our result should look like. To add pieces into our puzzle, we would click on a piece and hit plus one. And we can do that individually, or we could hit all plus one and what it does is it brings everything in except the result but I've got this bad frame here that I don't want in so I'm just going to individually say I've got these four plates and I've got this frame that's my puzzle P1 has this result uses these parts now I can then go to the solver and I can just simply click prepare and start and find out if there are any solutions. And there are five solutions. And I can click through the different assemblies that this could be built in. That doesn't mean you can, uh, from scratch, you could put these in. And it doesn't mean this could be disassembled, but it means that you could build this with these five pieces in these five different configurations. If you want to see if these can be disassembled, you click up here on disassemble. You prepare to erase all old solutions, hit start, and you'll find that you have one solution with this level of difficulty, 21222, and if you look at the puzzle here, pretty well the same thing. Not quite sure why that's a one instead of a two, but this looks like the intended solution of the designer. So you can be pretty confident now that this is how the puzzle should be assembled. You can then, to find out how these parts are arranged, if you click here the frame will disappear, S3 and 4 will disappear, and you can take a look, if you click it twice, the wire part of the frame also disappears, and you can see how these two pieces interact with each other and are placed in the frame. So you get an idea of how you can build that. You can reverse that and look at three and four and find out how those go. So you can see how the puzzle should be assembled. If you want to actually see a solution, 
you can actually step through the moves and it will show you how this puzzle is disassembled and how you can solve it. What I've done then is to model that in Fusion 360. And what I've done is create a frame with uh, some heat insets, but you could just put a hole there to screw the two frame bits together. I've placed these four plates as the software has indicated. And then with the two part frame, which I use in almost all my caged puzzles, I can assemble that and finally screw it together. And now I'm pretty confident that that puzzle is assembled as it should be.